Good afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador, uh, so much for coming to uh, to, to my, to my office uh, in Siem Reap. Um, and our team here is uh, very glad to to receive you, to host uh, you here. Thank you very much for, for coming. And okay, uh, my my first question is that uh, France and Cambodia have had a long history. Yeah. They share a long history together and then the presence of um, of the French school of uh, Asian study uh, in in France is uh, Ecole Française de Stem or Young Set it it uh, proof uh, it uh, evidence uh, that show the the long histo history together and my question to you Mr Ambassador so why France is so attached to uh, to culture to heritage speci specifically in uh, Angkor Sai in uh, Angkor archaeological site here in Simri. Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much for thank receiving you. me and uh, I'm very happy to, to meet with you and all the team of the young journalists and uh, I really appreciate what Mate May is doing all over the year and so uh, I'm glad to be here and to answer to your questions. Maybe uh, it's true that the history between Cambodia and France is 160 years, more than 160 years. And but the present of the school or the French say, school is uh, more than one, so we uh, one arrived, century already. The French school, the FAO arrived in Cambodia in 1907 and uh, so it's more than one on 100, cent, 100 years of uh, you know, cooperation and partnership with Cambodia. It's true that culture for France is, has always been very interesting. So in that period, when France arrived in this region, uh, there were many people coming. There were military men, there were priests, there were uh, politicians, there were civil servants, but also there were those researchers. Right from the beginning, we were curious about the, this Khmer history. This, this land, yes, and Khmer history. As you know, a uh, few French travelers arrived in Siem Reap in, in the 1860s, 70s, and they see this incredible site, and uh, that we were very curious. And s those young guys decided to learn the language and try to understand oh. wh what, what was it. And uh, because I think, maybe I'm wrong, that <laughs> at that time we, we lost, the Cambodians lost the explanation of what uh, Angkor, yeah, Angkor, Angkor, Wat. Wat, Angkor, Angkor Wat and the, the Angkor site was about. Yeah. Uh, Angkor Wat was still used by, by uh, religious people, but the other temples were totally abandoned. So it was so impressive, so, so exciting, the people wanted to understand. And uh, as we were here as a uh, you know, protectorate, uh, we uh, financed, we funded this uh, school to, to to promote studies, uh, research, and uh, and year after years we we could train some French uh, uh, academics who started to know the language, to to look at the monument, to look at the the writing, to look at many aspects of of, uh, of Angkor, and try to explain and try to yeah to to and also to to promote and to. To, to, preserve, keep, to, to preserve, rest, to, to preserve, to restore. So it's, it's yeah. a very long story, and I must say that from 19 oh, 1907 to 1972, 73, when we have to leave because there was a civil war, only French people were working on the work site, on the on the site of Angkor. That's why all the archives today, mm -hmm. most of the archives are in French language. Mm -hmm. So that's also very important that young Cambodians researchers interested mm -hmm. in archaeology or the aspects of the Angkor civilization should learn French because most of the archives are in French and there is a, a very important literature uh, you know, uh, about the Ang uh, Khmer civilization which is written in French. And yeah. that's something which is uh, maybe it's uh, one of the specificity of the relation between Cambodia, Cambodia and, and it's not yeah, only economy. Not only, uh, yeah, uh, not only economy. Uh, or not only, uh, <laughs> and I would say also, if, uh, if I may, I, I want to also add something very important in the relation between Cambodia and France is the fact that we never fought war with Cambodia. Yeah. We didn't make war to come. Yeah. And you didn't make war for us to live. Yeah. And that absence of violence between uh, our mm. two states 
uh, is very important and uh, I think it has a, this very positive consequences of having two countries yeah. which really appreciate each other. Okay, thank you, but uh, I just want to talk about, uh, no, since uh, 1993, uh, France and Japan yeah. uh, has, been, uh, has been the co-chair of uh, ICC, the International Coordination Committee of the Safeguard, Safeguarding and Development of Onco Sites. And then uh, until last year, so it, it was uh, 30 years, uh, I mean, yep. uh, the committee uh, which has been uh, co-chaired by uh, France and Japan. So what, what was the uh, France commitment to, I mean, to, uh, to safeguarding of Uncle size? So and what, what, what are the main outcome yeah. uh, resulted from uh, that uh, coordination committee? I think we, we first have to acknowledge that everything has been possible because of late King Norodom Sihanouk. Because Norodom Sihanouk really believed, and he was right to believe that Angkor is so important for, in the Khmer civilization and the site is so important for the unification of the kingdom. So when there was a Peace Paris Agreement in 1991, right after King Sianu asked to put Angkor Site on the list of UNESCO. At that time, Angkor Site has been put on the list in violation of all the rules of UNESCO. Because when you want to put a site on the list of UNESCO, you have to prove that you have institutions which are able to preserve, to promote. But in 1992, we have nothing of it. But okay. we, not only King Sihanouk, but other countries around, like France, especially mm. France and Japan, we thought that that was very important. And so that's why we, uh, the first conference took place in Tokyo in 1993, just uh, to know, two years after the Peace Paris Agreement. And all the community uh, stakeholders, uh, yeah. stakeholders were agreed to, to, and I must say that Sianuk has another incredible idea, which is unique. He said, I what, want- What, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I want the preservation of the Angkor site under the scrutiny of international experts. So he didn't say, this is Cambodia, I don't want the, the foreigners to look at it, it's us. Yeah. No, this belongs to the- To, to everyone, to, human, human, to human human humanity. And yeah. I want experts coming mm. from abroad yeah. to, to have a look on and uh, to look advice, after, yeah. advice on what should we do to preserve, to promote. And this system, this mechanism of ICC is unique today. There is no other, uh, other uh, situation worldwide where we have the same kind of mechanism. And that was a wish of King Sihanouk and also Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Hun Sen and then the King Siamoni and the new Prime Minister. I mean, Cambodia, author Cambodia government authorities still think that this mechanism is very useful. And I must say that it should be an example for the rest of the world. The fact that you why? Know, because we you pull knowledge, mm. you pull uh, you know people people experts working with Cambodians uh, in partnership, and then you make sure that uh, this site will not be uh, targeted by blunt economic uh, you know uh, uh, interest, interest yeah. or whatever. So uh, so the first and this first conference in Tokyo was decided that. Every 10 years, we will have a conference. The second one was in Paris, then the third one was in Cambodia, yeah. and the fourth and last one, the most recent, was in UNESCO Paris. And uh, it's true that Japan and France have been co-chairing this mechanism, and uh, everybody seems satisfied and wanted us to continue. And uh, for France, it's something we are very honored to, mm -hmm. to do. It, uh, it's a privilege. So within and the 30 years, what, what were the main uh, so results, the, uh, the main, the main outcome? Uh, if you want some figures, I can tell you that for the last 30 years, 600 million of your dollars was, were in, invested in Angkor site by different stakeholders, not only France, but also, you know, there are many countries now working with you. For the restoration, for, for restoration, the preserve. 100 projects, and the value, the total value is around 600 million USD. So it's not only to restore the, the, the temples, but also to, to res make research on the writing, on, on different mm. aspects of the Khmer civilization. And I think this is quite uh, unique. And, 
and, this and human capital education for human example. No. So each decade has a special team. The mm. first decade was to to uh, protect because that was urgent at that yeah. time. In 1992, you see, it, still there were a lot of violence in Cambodia. The first time I visited uh, Angkor was in 1995. Oh, uh, and it long was, time ago. Yeah, <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, for instance, landmines were still a lot. You couldn't uh, visit the site uh, mm. wherever you want. You couldn't go very far because Khmer Rouge were still not far from Angkor. Uh, so that was a protect. The second, uh, then the second decade, the third was on sustainable development. And the fourth is what you said. It's about human capital. Human capital means how do we strengthen, first of all, the Cambodian uh, specialist, how do we uh, work with APSARA, the, the national authority? But also my wish is that uh, the community living in the, in the site of Hong Kong be more, more, um, be more included in the work of ICC. I think ICC should have more contact with the population, should know more about this population, should know more about the wish of the people, what are their difficulties, what, you know, because we need to, to make sure that the site of Hong Kong, which is one of the most famous in the world, has to manage its, uh, its properly. future yeah. properly. And then we have many challenges. And uh, I can, we can speak about that if you want. But we have many challenges, yeah. including new challenges linked to climate change. Really? Oh, yeah, sure. So and can you elaborate uh, uh, a bit more about no, that? You have uh, the issue of pollution, you have the issue of wa water system, uh -huh. you have, uh, 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 you know, that, you know, that um, I'm not a specialist, uh, expert, yeah. in, I'm, I'm not yeah. an expert, but uh, Angkor is built on sand, sand. Yeah. So, and this sand is, is quite solid because there is water. Yeah. But if the water day, under yeah. the ground <laughs> is diminishing, yeah. the, uh. the stability of the temples might be jeopardized. So that's why uh, you have so many challenges. And then you have the challenge, the, 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 the tourism challenges, because, because they are, more they and more, more people yeah, more uh, tourism. may come to this place. And you know that yeah. uh, we see in the world, for instance, in some places like in Venezia, in yeah. Italy, or in Amsterdam, in Netherlands, when you, are, you have a huge number of tourists, it has a, a real impact. It, not necessarily a un, only positive impact. It might also have a negative impact. So how do we manage the, the flow yeah, of the, tourists? Yeah, tourist uh, flow. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when this, uh, Cambodia decided to build, to build a big airport close to Angkor. So this big airport is supposed to welcome more planes, more tourists. Mm -hmm. And if the number of tourists is uh, Increase, uh, increasing uh, a lot, how do yeah. you manage this? Yeah. And uh, you've been, you have visiting Angkor Wat and temples. You see, most of the tourists sometimes they don't really care about protecting. They touch the everything, and mm -hmm. so that's an issue. Also, how do we do a sustainable so, tourism? So, uh, to you, touching uh, stone or touching sculpture on the wall is also a problem. It might be a problem if you have millions of people coming. Do you see, I saw the young people with uh, back. Uh, back, back. Ah, yes, back, back. The, the, and, the, and, back, and they yeah. move and the, uh, and it touched the yeah, they touch it, the, it the wall, the wall yeah, and the so far. Sculpture. So, so yeah, it's a it's a big issue. So it's also very interesting. So among the experts, because in ICC we have seven experts. Okay, four are working on restoration monument. Yeah, three on uh, sustainable development. So those people, those experts, are give, uh, giving advice, and this advice should be followed. And okay. me as a co-chair, I'm, I'm doing nothing. I just let the experts uh, the space uh, de de to, yeah. to, to look, to decide, to give yeah. advice. And then yeah. uh, okay, so uh, 30 years passed. So no? yeah. 30 years passed already. Yeah. And then last year, a friend at Japan agreed to co-chair for another 10 years. Yeah. So what are the main reasons, the main objective why France and, and Japan have a big commitment and to continue? for another 10 years, so in total, uh, it, it 40 years, and yeah. I, I, I heard from experts that it's it very unique, uh, that uh, yeah. there's uh, a committee, you know? First of all, uh, I say it's unique, but you duplicate this mechanism for Preavir. Yeah. You have a ICC Preavir, yeah. which we'll meet next week, by yeah. the way, and that's co-chaired by India and China. Ah, okay, okay. okay. So, uh, we were, uh, 
because when I arrived as an ambassador, that was exactly the time to decide should we continue or not. Okay. But it seemed that uh, the participants, the members of ICC ANCO, uh, was very keen to have France and Japan to continue. And for us, for France, it's something we really, as I say, it's a privilege, it's an honor, and it's also something quite logical because of uh, history, we yeah. have e EFEO and so on. So uh, for, for us, it was, uh, we are, we have we have been asked to to continue, and uh, we we are very honoured and very pleased to say yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, <laughs> you want to add? No, something? no. It's, okay. uh, and then uh, I think it's good that this mechanism uh, continue because it's uh, it seems to work well. It can be improved as all mechanism, but uh, I think it it brings an added value for for the site. Yeah. Thank you very much for your answer, but I have another question for you because uh, I heard from you just now. You visited already Uncle Wat Temple in 1995 already. Yeah, so, and 1996. Uh, yeah, and, and, yeah, and then you said you, you, you visited many times already Uncle Wat Temple or maybe the Uncle yeah, Wat yeah. site in general. Yeah. So for you, I mean, uh, what is the value, what is the meaning of Uncle Sai, for example, in general? So when you come and you visit, uh, what does it mean? I mean, uh, very uh, large. Uh, yeah. So when you come and you visit uh, the stone, or what? Yeah, the, the, what? Yeah. The, the it's a good question. <laughs> I think tourists are coming from different countries with yeah. their own culture. So yeah. some people are very, maybe some people, Indian, Indian tourists coming to Angkor, they link to their own civilization yeah. because Angkor is linked to Brahmanism. And so they might have, if they are strong believer, they might have first a, a, a religious uh, uh, rea reaction or, yeah. or, you know, uh, empathy with. Uh, Sympathy, uh, yeah. For me, as a non-Buddhist person, when I arrive in the, in the site, first of all, it's, the imp it's so impressive. Okay. So many stores, so many. How? My question is how. How was it possible to build such big monuments uh, in that time? You know, and uh, so you ask yourself the question: How it was organized? What was the political system which allowed this uh, this incredible uh, construction buildings? And uh, and then it's also aesthetically speaking, it's quite uh, mm -hmm. powerful, and also the fact that it's uh, it's an it's inside a, a park with you know, trees, a for a and also the fact that there are people living. Okay. That's very interesting. Living heritage. Uh, yeah, living heritage. It's not all heritage site, mm -hmm. which is uh, populated by by local people, and that's also something which is uh, interesting. So, for a tourist to 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 move in that space is, yeah, it's quite impressive. And uh, but the question I ask myself is, how come? Okay. <laughs> so, so if I ask come? you in one word or one sentence to summarize the meaning of Angkor size, so how can you summarize for me the meaning of uh, Angkor size, for example, uh, just in a, one sentence a, or two sentences? It's proof that man can do extraordinary things. It's something which is more, it's, it's further than what you can expect from a population. And do. that work, that work was done one one thousand years ago. Yeah, one thousand. You know, Angkor Wat is at the same time we were building Notre Dame in Paris. So ah, the, the same, 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 the same, same century. Yeah, same century. So, so what what are the difference between? Uh, uh, the, the, yeah, difference <laughs> is uh, first of all, no, there is something which is uh, common is that uh, you are believer or not believer, but at that time relig religion can push people. To, to create things quite uh, unique. I mean, like, uh, you know, like Notre that. Dame was done by believers in Catholic religion, and uh, here was uh, Brahmanism and then Buddhism. And so uh, religion some pushed people to do some outstanding uh, thing, like, uh, like Angkor, yeah. But uh, that's maybe the common point between what happened in France at that time and what happened in, in Cambodia. In, in Cambodia. But uh, then the, I think it was easy, more easy to, to build Notre Dame than to build <laughs> <laughs> all the temples because there are so many temples. That's yeah. It's not only on Kauvat. Huh? Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for your explanation and for your time and mm, uh, for uh, our team, uh, my, my team and no, Cambodian team. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank, thank, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.